Hey, happy new year. I'm Marie Poulin. And in this video, I want to share with you a really simple way to break down your goals inside of your Notion workspace. You've probably seen a ton of people share their annual reviews and their intentions for the year ahead. And I get a lot of questions about goal setting, objectives, key results, KPIs, and it can feel really overwhelming to know how deep to go, how much detail to go into, what's going to be most helpful, and to make sure that we are using our goals aspirationally and as a way to incentivize and encourage and inspire us not to judge us for not reaching them. So I stumbled upon this tweet by Barrett Brooks, where he outlined all of his goals for 2021, very generously sharing all of the different sort of maintenance habits and routines and things that he's going to focus on for the year ahead. It's so practical because it gives you some really concrete examples of the daily actions that are required to hit his goals. But at the end of the day, he didn't actually state what his goal was. I feel like this shares the actions without the final desired result. So what I want to do is I'm copying all of these into a Notion page just to show you what it would look like to take something like this and translate it into a system where you can track this more regularly. So if we jump into Notion, I've created this really simple page called Goals and Objectives. There's a quote at the top by James Clear. If you haven't read his Atomic Habits, that's a really, really great starting point. James Clear talks a lot about the idea of identity-based goals and getting that 1% better every day. Barrett has done a really great job of breaking out the number of workouts, the number of days that he wants to be in bed by 10 p.m., how much water he wants to drink, coffee, water, run, etc. But I don't necessarily know what his goal is for his health. Is it to maintain a baseline level of fitness? Is it to look totally ripped and look like a Gymshark athlete? Or something like that. So let's break this up into a new table. And let's call this practices, whatever is most helpful for you. So he's already outlined a bunch of these here. So I'm just going to drag these in here. And then delete these extra lines. So we've got all the practices outlined. And now we want to add a couple extra fields. And so we're going to want to track the target is 120. Now this is going to be a number, right? Because that's the number of workouts that he wants to do throughout the year. I think it's really great to think of this in terms of a yearly time frame. And then current. Let's also change that to a number property. Great. And then we're going to want to add another field. I might uh, just hide this. You're more than welcome to add whatever properties are going to be most helpful for you. Now I'm going to add a formula here. I will include this in the description notes because this is not necessarily intended to be about formulas, but I just want to show you what you can do here. So this will measure a progress of your current and target. And this way throughout the year, as you add this up, you will start to uh, work toward your progress here. Now, of course, if you were to relate this to your daily journal, we can start to automate this a little bit better. But for the moment, this will be something that you can just track manually. And you're going to want to go into here each week and just update the current against the target. So we know that he wants to do this 200 times. Great. And we'll set all of these to zero. And so, for example, if we say that we're 10 out of 120, that's 8%. If we did 110, you can see that's already at 92%. So this starts to give you something where you can track over time. And you'll just want to add that up every week. Now, this is a super simplified version. Mine is a lot more complex with more relations, but you don't need to go wild. If you're just at the point where you're not really following through on your goals, you probably don't need that added complexity. It's more important that you actually follow through on the activity itself than to worry about all the systems and the tracking that you're, you're going to build for it. So more important that you're taking action and have a place to check that off. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually hook these practices up to a goal or an identity. So I'm going to make a new uh, gallery here. I like to use the gallery because I find it a little more visual, a little more inspiring. So let's just call it goals and I'll just delete a couple of these extra entries. And so I would say this would be the place to put your health identity goal, or again, whatever category you're looking at. But one of the examples I've got here 
from James Clear. Be the type of person who never misses a workout. So let's paste that in here just as an example. Delete those, right? So there's an example of a goal. Let's put something inspiring in there. Let's put a let's put a little flex icon and let's add a cover image, something inspiring. Choose something from Unsplash. You could, you know, something fitness related. Beautiful. And then let's make sure we adjust this, the properties to show page cover. Great. And then what I'm going to do now is create a relation between the goals and practices. Now you don't necessarily have to do this. Again, you can always simplify wherever needed, but hooking up your practices and your goals, I think starts to make the experience and the tracking a little bit richer. So I'm going to open this up and let's add a relation to practices. Excellent. So let's hook these all up because these are all fitness related goals, right? And then I might start playing with the views to make it a little bit more helpful to see this information in different ways. So let's turn on some of these properties here. Now that's not necessarily super helpful because it's going to get cut off in this gallery view. So this may not be the most helpful way of viewing this information. I might create a table view of this. Let's hide this. I don't need that. All right, so there's my goal and I might open this up, wrapping the cells so I can see all of those different practices. Excellent. And so as we go down, we start to add more of these goals and practices. It starts to become a place where you can really track your progress over time, see how you're doing and have that place to inspire you. We've got our health goals in here. Now let's add a couple financial goals just to give you an example of what it looks like when you've got multiple practices and multiple goals in the same database. So we know that the financial goals are to add 30K to savings. And we just need to format that a little better. So, right, add 30K to savings. So the target would be 30 or 30,000, depends kind of how specific you want to get with these amounts and numbers. And max 401k and 529. And so that's where you would put your max amount. I'm just making up some numbers here. And so let's say zero, zero. Great, so we've got some targets here. Now we know that these are financially related goals. So this might be a good chance to add this new goal into here. So what is the identity with regards to finance. Become the type of person who invests in their future. So this is just kind of a wild, uh, wild guess here. So we want to connect that up to our practices. And so we want to max 401k, add 30k to savings. So we know that those are connected there. And this might be a chance to say, add some tags. So this one would be, you know, health, Health and wellness, finances, great. And under practices, what I would do is show that property as well. So goals and practices. So you can kind of choose how you want to visualize this information, what's going to be most helpful to you. I find the goals on the left and the practices on the right like this all batched together is a really helpful way to view it. So you can kind of decide if you want to hide that relation, just have your practices here, just have your goals here uh, and be able to measure your progress. So if you open up any of these, you're going to see all the practices are here. And what we can also do is <laughs> add a roll up. If you want to see the practices progress. So a roll up allows you to look up any of relations properties and pull in any of the properties that exist on practices. So let's say progress. And so that might not be the most helpful view when you look at it like this, but when you look at it in this view, what we can do is turn on that property. 
And again, this property is mimicking identically this property here. And so let's say, just to throw in some numbers here, All right, you can start to see these are lined up with these over here. So it gives you a couple options in terms of how you want to see it. And then you might also want to increase the width of the page so that you can see more of this data. So I would move this to full width. And then again, if you want to, you could see more of this, more of the progress. It totally depends what is going to be most helpful to you. That's not exactly super easily visible, so I might not uh, show it in that format. And again, you can choose if you want to see this in table view or Kanban view, you know, you can check it out in board view, maybe by type that might be helpful just to show you what that looks like by type or area, right? Health and wellness finances. And again, you can turn on the page cover if you like, show you something more inspiring. Again, I don't think this is going to be helpful because right, you can't necessarily see the practices, but that might be a more helpful way to view it where you've got all of the practices lined up and And so you can see as you start to add these categories, you've got your identity, the person that you want to be, and then you've got all the daily practices that are going to make sense for helping you reach that identity. Now, again, I would go through and do this for each of the categories that you've set for yourself. Really focus on what are those daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly actions that you're going to need to take to help you reach your goals. But if you haven't articulated those goals yet and what, what you really want out of your life, then it's going to be hard to figure out what these activities are. So I do encourage you to think about both. Where do you want to head? And what are the daily smaller actions that are going to help you get there? And as long as you've got those two things identified, you can, you know, play around and have some fun with Notion and decide how you want to track this. But that's the key is just simplifying objectives, key results, KPIs. If you're, if you're really setting goals for yourself personally, forget about all the terminology, use whatever words are going to be most helpful for you. The most important thing is really identifying those practices more than anything else. So now once we've got the basics, let's level it up a little bit and connect this up to your daily journal, because this is where you're going to do a lot of that sort of habit tracking on a daily basis. A lot of people like to build out a separate habit tracker, which is fine. But because I'm already doing a daily journal and I'm already marking off other activities like physical activities, it just makes sense for me to build my practices into my journal. So what I'm going to do is show you with my journal as an example, I'm going to connect this up to practices just to give you an idea. So let's create a linked database. I'm going to pull in my journal. Now let's make a new entry just so I can hook this up and show you what I'm talking about. January 5th. Tuesday and today is Tuesday, which is going to apply a template. Great. Okay. So you can see I'm already doing quite a bit of tracking at a daily level. Feelings, effectiveness, energy, happiness, moving my body, you know, practice. So this is one that I haven't yet fully flushed out, but I'm going to link it to the one that we've got here just to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to add a new property to relate to this practices property that I just created just to show you what it would look like to track those particular metrics inside of this database. So I would probably call it practices and I would link that up. So now when I click on practices, I can start to see all of those different things that I've outlined. So if I was in bed by 10 p.m., I could click on that. If I uh, didn't, if I had less than four ounces of coffee today, I can click on that. Did I go for a walk or a run? Yes. Okay. 
wonderful. And so these are all of the practices that I did today in my journal. So when I go back here, I will now see there is a new property here that is my journal. Now over time, obviously, the more that you add those properties into your journal, you're gonna get a number of different entries here. And so what we could start to do is a roll up. And if I wanted to, I can hide this property here. Well, let's say, let's call it count. And this could replace your current if you wanted it to. I would basically create a roll up And I'm going to choose the journal property. And all I need to do is uh, count all. all. Right, so all of those have one, these have zero. If, for example, I added January 4th, right, the count becomes two. And so this is another way if you wanted to um, automate some of these entries as well as have some manual entries. So for example, you can always just keep the current updated to show the count. But, but basically, I like to leave the formula based on manually added information instead of doing this automation, just in case there's things that you don't wanna connect up to your journal and you need a little bit more flexibility. So I give it some flexibility here and make sure that I include both. And then you can just rename this journal or days or whatever you want to call it. What I'll do is I'll delete my journal property, I'll replace it with a blank journal property, and I'll include this as a template that you can use if you just want to use this for your own habit tracking, just to give you a starting point. So that's my recommendation for how you might want to start setting this up inside of Notion if you're starting from scratch with a goals database. Think about that identity, who you want to become, and work out what are all of those different activities and things that you're going to need to do that are going to get you closer to that. All you need are those two databases really at the end of the day. And then when you're talking about the daily tracking, that's when you're gonna to wanna to layer in your daily journal. I hope this is helpful. I hope it's inspired you to do the work to break down your bigger picture goals into some more concrete daily actions that are gonna help you move closer toward your goal because it's so much easier to track and to make that 1% progress. And that way we're not judging ourselves for this this big long-term goal. We're simply outlining the things that we can control. Thanks for watching. And if you really love this video and want to go deeper into my work with Notion, check out my course, notionmastery.com. I help people build out their whole work and life management systems inside of Notion. And I'd love to help you do the same. So remember to use your goal setting as a way to encourage and inspire you not to judge you. I'm curious to hear what are your goals for 2021? What do you want to do more of? Who are you going to be in 2021? I'd love to hear in the comments below. And as always, let me know if there's something that you want to see me cover next. Just add a comment below and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.